ritual and the ceremony almost over. A chance now for the New Zealanders to throw down the challenge, just as the South Africans have been doing throughout all the pre-match celebrations. Jenna Lamu absolutely living the haka. And the big boy getting really carried away there. And it'll be Andrew Mertens, the youngster who's made such a terrific impression in this tournament, taking a short one, totally different. A mistake, but South Africa picking it up, so... Play continues, offside by New Zealand. Right from the start, Steve, trying something different. Yes, as against England, they tried something different there, but unlike against England, this one didn't work. Maybe a sign of things to come. On the Australian tour. Taken by Dowd at the front. Wide to Bunce. Bunce, as so often does, making that vital yard or two. And offside, the South Africans going over the top to kill it. Andrew Mertens, as cool as ice, even though he always looks like a rather worried little individual. Scored 100 points in the World Cup so far. And through it goes! First blood to New Zealand, five minutes gone, and they lead three points to nil. And like you say, John, as cool as ice, that young man, isn't he? That was a real pressure kick, start of this uh, opening of this World Cup final. The tension and then the pitch is unbelievable. Andrew Mertens, his father, a junior all back. Over the top to Pina. South African captain sets it up. Kruger goes blind. Stransky finding a little wriggle through. And well held by Olo Brown, the prop eventually getting him down. Wide it goes, back inside to the big man Andrews, and a penalty, he was offside and he knows it. That was Robin Brook, way, way offside and a rush of blood to the head as so often happens to second row forwards when they find themselves in that position. So South Africa, a chance to level the scores from a very similar position to the kick that Mertens landed through that match and into this final. No mistake there either. Coming up to 11 minutes gone and Joel Stransky levels the scores. The president applauds. 3-0. Good jump from Ian Jones, beautifully taken by the New Zealander. And Lomo straight through the middle, breaks one tackle. The pass going. Penalty to New Zealand. South Africa offside. Great applause because Lomo was actually tackled. And when he tried to pass inside, it was uh, number eight Mark Andrews who was there to intercept. High and true, right through the middle. And New Zealand go back into the lead, six points to three. And that's going to be South Africa's problem, just where is Jonah Lomo going to turn up next? Out on the left wing, in the centre. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him amongst the forwards doing this game. Yes, yeah, so and this time he came to the middle of a decoy run. And once he's taken that ball at pace, he does now have to take some stopping, but a great tackle for the South African scrum half. Fitzpatrick... He's seen it all before, the only survivor from the 87 World Cup final. Driving off the side, Andrews. Again, the little thrust from, and they're over this point. They can get it down. No, the referee can't see it. Quite right, Ed Morrison couldn't see the ball go down. Look at the faces of the South Africans. They can't believe they haven't been given the try. 
Well, we've seen it so often in this tournament. Players going over the line. Referee was in a superb position then, and you must get the ball down to the ground. And more importantly, John, the referee must see it. If in doubt, scrum to the tack inside. Big push, and if New Zealand escape from here, they will consider an escape, but a big push from the South Africans. They've got that New Zealand scrum under real pressure, and a penalty to South Africa. Well, I'm sure that'll be a talking point after the game. The drive went forward from the South African scrum when Ed Morrison has penalised the New Zealanders for deliberately disengaging in the scrummage. Now then, the question is, if they'd gone that extra two metres, they might have scored, should a penalty try have been awarded. Pina gone for goal. I'm not quite sure if it had been attempted there to get a scrum down again a yard from the New Zealand line because it seems to me as well the South Africans fancy the chances in the scrimmage and they really took them on in that one. On target again. No mistake from the Western Province fly half and the scores are level. But importantly there, Steve... A little advantage for the first time in the forward battle going South Africa's way. Yes, I can see the fans of the chances in those, scr in those scrums. South Africa have always been a fantastic scrummaging nation. If they see any weakness... Andrews coming off, driving away on the blind side. Van der Westhaven... Just chipping down there, they've let it bounce. We know what he's like. Well, there's been a knock on there, certainly, if not more. Scrum to South Africa. And I don't think that there'll be any surprise what South Africa are going to do here. They'll put the ball in, they're going to double drive and try to push New Zealand straight back over their own goal line. There's the knock on, it goes back, accidental offside as well, double infringement, South African scrimmage. Now New Zealand digging in, and a penalty, and Olo Brown there being accused of taking the scrum down, real pressure, now he's not going to put up with taking it down and just giving away penalties for long, total concentration. Is it going to stay wide? Just is. It didn't curl. It looked as if it was going to for a while. But uh, 27 minutes gone, and the score remains New Zealand 6, South Africa 6. And the only clear pattern at the moment is that when the ball goes wide, New Zealand have the advantage. And in the forward, South Africa just have an advantage. A classic contest. Van der Vestesen looking to run. James Small coming in. Rousseau. Fed back by Kobus Visser. Andrews on the charge. Taken by Fitzpatrick. Visser. And New Zealand having to tackle their hearts out. Rousseau again. Back it comes. Kruger driving on. Now they've got men's fair if they can work it wide quickly. Joubert almost getting free. South Africa have it still, back it comes to Stramski, the drop goal, it's there! And South Africa into the lead for the first time, 31 minutes gone, and getting the reward for that pressure. And they deserved it, wonderful South African forward play, some great driving, rooking ball by the forwards, eventually spun it out wide, good tackle by Frank Bunce to save the day on Joubert, but Stransky knew when he got this ball back from the rook, which he almost inevitably was going to, there was only one option. And of course they'll get the line out. Another massive kick from the fly half. Joel Stransky and the referee decides that's the 40 minutes up.
Really is a fascinating battle. South Africa have the edge at the moment. Two penalties and a drop goal to two penalties. South Africa lead 9-6. New Zealand have made a substitution for replacement on Jamie Joseph. Wrapped in there by Robin Brooke. Straight down the touchline this time it goes from Graham Bashup. Chester Williams pushes it straight back. Walk his nose into the situation. A little loop, wide it goes, Osborne through the gap, wide to Lamu. He's run past Yuba. Good tackle, across it came, Big Yapi Mulder. The 15 stone centre getting across to make the second tackle. Wonderful rugby though, New Zealand, they put Lomo in space for the first time. And he proved one thing in this game anyway, you actually can bring him down because he's been brought down on several occasions in this match. Desperate straights here, South Africa. But they really do show fantastic commitment in the tackle. Important line out for South Africa. They're just seven or eight metres out. New Zealand got the touch, though, off their throw. Little with the little dummy, almost through. Just legs knocked away by Mulder. Back it comes. And the drop goal goes over. Mertens as cool as a cucumber. He thought about spinning it left to go for the try, then decided he wanted the points. And New Zealand are level again. Identical scoring, two penalties and a drop goal to each side, nine all. And they deserve those three points, New Zealand. Some beautiful midfield play. Set up the rook here in midfield. It's what they want to do. Frankie Bunce just laying the ball back. Mertens looking, just looking, just checking, just looking. He knows where that ball's going, right between the uprights. Just ten seconds left on the clock. We should have some injury time. Still all locked up. Nine all. Just that one drop goal in the second half. Oh, and the way this ball bounced could be vital. And the New Zealand players trying to keep it alive to get in a big clearance. Couldn't do it. Chester Williams almost through. But a line out just five metres now from the New Zealand line. And the way that South Africa have been dominating the line out, you wouldn't bet against them actually taking the ball once again against the head. And if it is, well, Stransky will be cleaning his boots for the drop goal already. Sean Fitzpatrick facing one of the pressure moments of his long career. Tremendous responsibility on him with the throw. Gets it right, and Ian Jones comes up with the ball. Bashup puts it away to touch. Now it's the South African throw. And they're still only out to the 22, well within range. But the referee blowing for full time. We'll now have 10 minutes each way, extra time. The score's locked at 9 all. We'll take a break there and be back in a moment. Well, tension will be out there, but at South Africa, I'm sure, we'll realise they have actually got to win this because if it does stay all level at the end of full time and extra time, they will have lost the World Cup on their poorer disciplinary record. So off we go, ten minutes each way. In comes the battle again. Van der Westhuizen putting it high. Ellis leaving for it. Knocked forward by the All Blacks, so scrum down South Africa. It would be sad to see the World Cup settle like that jump, but I don't think it will be personally. I think we'll see some scores in this extra time period because both sides are very tired indeed. The actual ruling is that it goes to try scored in the match, not in the tournament, in the match first. And they would decide it if one side has scored more than the other. And if that does not bring a result, then it goes to disciplinary record. Offside in front of the kicker. So New Zealand now have a kick two metres inside the South African half, and I am absolutely certain that Mertens will go for goal. 
and that all came about because Stransky cut back inside Kronfeldt as he's done so often but the two centres had gone ahead of him so when he actually kicked they were ahead of him and offside it's hardly a surprise now he really doesn't have to strike this too hard he's got plenty of distance but he's hooked it no he hasn't stayed inside the near post and New Zealand go into the lead in extra time a third penalty from Andrew Mertens gives them the lead 12-9 scrum staying up back it comes little chip through into the South African half Joubert getting across just does it beautifully well done by Bunce and Bashup putting it over into the wide open spaces Mark Ellis is after it but Chester Williams comes up with the ball good cut inside from him Van der Vestesen sniping down the blind side they've got room forward pass well spotted that one was definitely forward no question of it yeah, no doubt at all about that, John. Ed Morris was well placed for it, and this crowd who cheered when he blew against Lumo is now booing him when he's given exactly the same decision out on the wing. Let's look at it very closely here. Coming through, yes, no doubt at all. Forward pass. Durant runs it back at New Zealand. Hoisted high by Stransky. And the deflection coming back, South Africa's way. And the referee spotted it. Over the top, he said, you went New Zealand. The cheers ring around. As yet again, a golden opportunity here for Stransky to level up the scores. That more than going over the top, although that's what he gave it for. There was a little hand in there that flicked it back, but it was the right decision. And it's over, Stransky, the coolest man on the park. The whistle goes for half-time in extra time. And once again, it's all tied up now at 12 all. Now we'll certainly have the, the water carriers on the field, I've no doubt. But uh, officially, there's no break as you turn straight around. Right, we're ready to go again. That sounds like pretty sensible advice to me. Hunt the ball, the side which is in possession is going to be the one which has the initial advantage. New Zealand have it. Mertens hoisting it deep, but he hasn't cleared Joubert. Expect him to do the same thing. He's the master of that kick. Hits that one so much lower than every other kick that he puts into touch and just spirals it dead he must have got permission of course has to be an injury replacement back it comes to Stransky up goes the kick up goes the wall Stransky has kept his head and with two minutes gone in the second period of extra time South Africa's dream is alive once more and it's absolutely unbelievable the crowd has gone mad Joel Stransky, beautiful strum ball. No doubt what he was going to do. And he struck it straight between the uprights. Terrific kick from the Western Province outside half. We've seen that look before. Plays restarted. New Zealand have it. Little. Out it comes to Bunce, who stands his face. Mark Ellis coming back inside, but he can't hold it. Now expect eight minutes of fury from the New Zealanders. Mark Ellis had to hold on to that. Coming up to three minutes gone, they've got seven minutes to overtake. And New Zealand have to get the ball back. Taken by Kruger. Oh, and a penalty against Kronfeldt. 
rolling around on the ground, playing the ball. He has to recover his feet after the tackle, and New Zealand now losing their discipline, and that won't help them at all, because all it's doing is running down the clock for South Africa. Tension spilling over, South Africa just needs to keep a cool head now, because this is well within Stransky's range, and if he gets this one, I really do believe it will be all over. And he's missed it. New Zealand will come racing out now to kick off quickly, I'm sure. They've got to get the ball back. And they've really now almost got to go the length of the field. There should be some injury time. Flick, they've got the ball back. Bounces off. They have to get rid of it and the mistake there on the pass. Pinas straight in to stop it. from South Africa. Now surely the dream must have come true. They've just got to get the ball from this scrum and keep possession. And that's the way they'll do it, keeping it in the middle of the back and going for the line. Back it comes to you, Sven de Vestesen. A little knock forward, but that's it! South Africa have won the World Cup, having been back in international rugby for less than three years and having not taken part in the first two competitions. At their first attempt, they have stolen the crown. Unbelievable scenes all around the park. Francois Pina, as you can see, absolutely in tears. And the whole team crying together as they've been all the way through the tournament, just giving themselves a few moments to savour it. They can hardly believe it themselves. Well, South Africa go on their lap of honour. Walter Little and his teammates don't even want to face the cameras. Francois Pina, what a dream for him. He came into the South African team as captain. This is his 21st game, every one of them as captain. Now some of the famous old Springboks from another era. The president to the captain. There it is. Francois Pina. And Nelson Mandela is cheering along with the whole of the stadium. A sea of flags. Wonderful moment for the whole of South Africa. We hardly believed it could happen for them but it has and now the celebrations i'm sure will go on for at least a week